All right. Uh, do you folks hear me well? Yeah, I can see your presentation and your oh. Amazon piece. Too. All right, so I will get started. So uh, I have uh, put these uh, slides available on the internet. So if you folks want to follow it uh, slide by slide, it's already published here. So it's this tinyurl.com slash starting dash with start dash FOSS. Uh, this presentation is uh, kind of uh, a continuation of the previous presentation, but it's uh, I'm going to, to abort my, pres my, my, my experience uh, starting contributing to GNOME and how I made this my job nowadays, and how you can do that as well, thanks to programs like Google Summer of Code and Outreachy. So if you have any questions, you can also find me on the GNOME IRC. I am mostly working there, and uh, also on email. I'm also Felipe Borges on Twitter, if you would rather find me on Twitter. Uh, my story with GNOME uh, has a lot to do with the story of these programs because uh, with all these programs, I totally couldn't be able to, to be doing what I am doing nowadays. Uh, I am originally from Brazil. And uh, when I started contributing to GNOME, I didn't even have a computer at home. Uh, I used to go to the library uh, in my school and uh, we were using Linux there because it was cheap. It was a time where there was no laws preventing uh, computers to be sold with a specific operating system. So they used to make a cheaper operating system by, by putting Linux on it. Uh, so there was a point where I bought a computer in a supermarket that came with Linux. And it was our own computer at home, but we didn't have internet. And it came with Linux, so I had to click all over the place to try to learn how to use things. And I noticed that some things were not translated, that some things were in Portuguese, that is the Brazilian uh, official language. And some things were in English. So I, were, I was researching when I used to go to the internet in, in the library of how I could fix that, how I could change that. And then I discovered a whole world of open source that I could actually contribute to that software, that could modify the software. And it was mind blowing to me because at the time I was definitely not a tech person. I wasn't uh, interested on working with computers. I, I started using computers when I was 16 years old already. So. I didn't grow up with, with computers. And uh, so I started contributing translations. I would uh, translate a lot of things with a dictionary, a paper one. Uh, I was not speaking English at the time, so I learned English by helping participate in the GNOME translation projects. And uh, being part of the GNOME translation team uh, taught me how the whole software development process works, how releases are made, how uh, people from different teams collaborate with each other and that got me inspired to learn how to to program how to to code and then i decided to study computer science in the university i was very conflicted about studying other things at the time it was the moment where i was uh, deciding what career i would like to to pursue and gnome definitely helped me take the softer ways of things because I, I was just passionate about the idea of people from all over the world collaborating to make software that is available for free on the internet and everybody can collaborate with it. So when I went to university for computer science, I started learning how to code and I started making some small contributions to GNOME. Uh, the, at the time, there was some app called GNOME Documents uh, that it's a PDF viewer and manager. It was starting uh, at the time, so I made a, a few code contributions to it. And then I, I, I was made aware of Google Summer of Code, which is this internship program for university students to contribute in open source. I'm going to get into details about uh, Google Summer of Code in the, in the further slides. But so in 2012, uh, I participated in Google Summer of Code, and it was a mind-blowing experience because uh, Google Summer of Code has a stipend. So it was a lot of money for my reality. We were quite poor at the time. So it really helped me to be able to buy myself uh, my own computer to be able to work and to study in the university. And uh, at that time, I was invited to participate in GUADEC uh, that was mentioned on the first presentation, which is the, the GNOME Users and Developers European Conference. That happens every year. It's the main GNOME event. And the GNOME Foundation used to, still does actually, uh, provide finance uh, help to students to attend the conference. So uh, I managed to go to Guadec in La Coruña in Spain at that time. And it was my first time flying. It was my first time speaking English in front of an audience. 
or speaking English to anybody else other than friends. And I, I just got so passionate about being the whole week there, talking to everybody, getting to know the heroes that I used to, to know from the internet. Because when I started contributing to GNOME, I used to read planet.gnome.org that is still available. Is this tool that aggregates uh, blog posts from GNOME people. I'm going to post here on the chat the link for Planet GNOME. And in, in this uh, page, you have uh, blog posts from various GNOME developers, foundation members. And I just started to see these folks as, as my heroes. I wanted to be like them. I wanted to have a, a career path like theirs. So I started to follow up close their personal lives, talk to them, and find out what they did, how they get there. And I found out that a lot of GNOME developers uh, did Google Summer of Code in programs like Outreachy as well. So uh, I decided uh, to continue with that program. And after contributing to GNOME documents in Google Summer of Code, I became a GNOME Foundation member. And then I felt more and more that I wanted to, to have that for my life. And I knew from, from Planet GNOME that various GNOME contributors were employed to work full time in GNOME that they were actually paid to work on that. And I, that was a dream for me to be able to, to be paid to work on software that I use in a daily basis that I believe on. And it, it's made, made by people who are, who are so great. So at that time, uh, one person that I met in Google Summer of Code uh, was invited to work uh, for a contracting company that was working with Endless uh, to develop this Endless OS. Endless OS was a, a Debian GNOME-based operating system that it was uh, developed targeting um, audiences with low internet connection, audiences in mostly on the global south. So they were kind of strong in Brazil. They were interested on in, uh, providing uh, cheap computers in the market in Brazil for people who cannot afford to buy good computers to have something that they can use for their education, entertainment, and all. So I, I got a contract for a whole year to work in a, in a Brazilian company that was working with Endless. The Brazilian company is called Parafernalia. And there I was working developing GNOME applications uh, that are for education purposes. So I wrote uh, a videos a browser managing application that was based on YouTube. Uh, I, I wrote uh, a Wikipedia client uh, with them that uh, would allow them to browse Wikipedia online because one of the deployments they had was about putting a computer in a Native uh, American tribe in Guatemala, I believe. And there they would be able to consult Wikipedia and read about a lot of things without internet access. So it was really like changing the reality of a lot of people working on that. So it was something that added up to my passion a lot. And uh, after that contract was done, uh, I got invited by the Red Hat to work on the desktop team. Red Hat is one of the biggest players in, in open source software. And uh, Red Hat has a whole desktop team with dozens of developers who, who work full time in GNOME. So I was invited to join the desktop team and for that, I had to move here to the Czech Republic. So I no longer live in Brazil. It's been five years uh, since I live here. And I know I'm very lucky to work in GNOME full time. So I maintain currently GNOME boxes. I also contribute to GNOME Control Center, which is the settings in, in GNOME. So I, if you manage printers, create new users, you probably have been using my code here and there. Uh, I contribute to various other efforts like uh, Fedora Silverblue, uh, Flatpak, so working for Red Hat empowered me to, to do these things and also be part of the GNOME project in an administrat administrative way, participate on the community as being a board member, participate on the various teams and committees. I'm also part of the Code of Conduct team that is going to have a presentation today. You shouldn't miss it. And yeah, it, this was something that it was only possible because of programs like Google Summer of Code and Outreach that enabled me to, to do this professionally. So uh, I saw this on the Outreach website that there is this statistic that 86% of tech professionals say that open source advance their careers because open source uh, is something that uh, it's a proven record of your contributions, right? Somebody can put your name on Google and find you out. And that's exactly how Red Hat approached me. When I, when I finished my contract with Endless, uh, I wasn't looking for, for a, a new job. I actually wanted to continue with Endless. But Red Hat was familiar with my contributions to GNOME, and they offered me to, to move here and to do these things professionally. So my open source contributions got me the job. And this is much better than having a CV where you are 
describing on your resume the things you have done for proprietary companies, but you can actually not show the, the code because this is written, this is copyrighted that belongs to somebody else. So open source allows you to have your name after the code you wrote available in a Google search away. So this really empowers you on the, on the job market. Also helps me, help me to find mentors. Uh, I learn from a lot of experienced developer, developers. I'm still learning a lot from very experienced developers. We are very lucky in the GNOME project to have people who are uh, pushing technology forward. A lot of things have been invented in the GNOME community. Like GNOME developers have invented technologies that are now uh, used by millions of people in the cloud business and the container business. So there are various technologies that were uh, started in GNOME. So GNOME is also this inception of technologies that start on the desktop and that they just take over the world. Uh, now the CEO of GitHub was a GNOME Foundation member and contributor in the past. There are people in Microsoft, Google, Amazon. There are great uh, GNOME people working in various places in the industry and pushing technology forward thanks to this expertise and thanks to, to being part of this community that actually uh, helps everybody else grow together. So it's very important. Uh, it was very important to me to be able to, to network, to get to know developers from other realities, from other countries, and get to, to work together with them. Uh, the demonstration and collaboration skills is also a very important topic that uh, you need to collaborate with people from all over the world. You need to be able to understand that there are different stakeholders in the project. The GNOME project, uh, it's, it's not itself targeting, uh, distributed to end users. Uh, the end users consume GNOME throughout the other operating systems like Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian. So uh, being able to understand that in some discussions there are different stakeholders, that some people have different perspectives on it, that some people want to make some certain changes because they have a different vision for the project and be able to reach consensus and discuss these things together is also a demonstration of collaboration skills that is very important in a software engineering project because we know that not a single person can develop things alone and uh, you definitely need to collaborate with others. So being good at collaboration is something you learn a lot from open source software. So getting uh, on the details about the programs itself, uh, I'll start with Google Summer of Code and then there will be another slide where I'll talk about Outreachy. Uh, Google Summer of Code is a, a Google program uh, that pays people to work during three months to contribute uh, to open source projects. Not just uh, GNOME, but there are various other projects like Mozilla has projects over there, KDE, Fedora, the Linux kernel, Camel. So there are various open source communities that have internship projects uh, available for Google Summer of Code. It happens once a year, usually around uh, May to August, if I'm not mistaken, but it's three months long. And uh, he, he pays uh, $5,000, I think, for United States people, and then it gets adjusted based on the Big Mac index to other countries. So everybody kind of gets something around 5,000. This is very important because a lot of us cannot uh, afford to contribute to open source software if we are not getting paid, because some of us have to provide for our families, need to put food on the table, and this money allows you to actually focus full time on working on it. And Google Summer of Code is a full time program, so you should expect that by enrolling in Google Summer of Code, you're going to be working uh, daily on, on, on your project. Uh, the eligibility, you need to be a university student. Uh, I remember that when I was a student, they requested me to have a proof of enrollment with the university. So I could ask my university to provide a document proving that I am uh, studying. It uh, doesn't necessarily need to be computer science or anything related to technology, but it needs to be a university level degree. And uh, uh, you also need to be over 18 years old to, to, to participate. The way the program works is that you write a proposal to work on a feature. Usually communities are going to have pages where they show features that they might be interested on. And you send this proposal to work during three months on implementing that. Uh, they are going to assign you a mentor. A mentor is usually a person from the community which is experienced. I've been mentoring now in Google Summer of Code and Outreach. So you can see a lot of us that became students, then got involved in the project and are mentoring the next generation. And this is happening on and on in Gnome. My, men my mentor when I was a student was also a student. And uh, we you can see various developers in the Gnome project like Florian Miller, uh, Carlos Garnacho, Bedad, various important GNOME developers have been Google Summer of Code students. Uh, 
the next Google Summer of Code is probably next year. Uh, this year we just ended now in August uh, the um, this round and is one round per year, so probably next year, which means that you have a lot of time to prepare. Uh, in the GNOME project, we expect that contributors are going to have a, a few contributions in the GNOME, in GNOME to prove that they are going to be able to deliver what we are agreeing on. So if you can start contributing to GNOME now, it might be a good idea for, for applying for Google Summer of Code in the future. Uh, the proposals is pretty much just about showing your previous contributions and convincing us that you're going to be able to, to deliver the, the, the project. And uh, Google Summer of Code has uh, this evaluation. There's a midterm evaluation in the middle of the program where both students and mentors evaluate their progress. And then the students receive the first slice of their stipend. And then there's a final evaluation in the very end where uh, the projects are, are done and, and the students get to, um, get to evaluate their mentors and vice versa. And we decide who passes and who doesn't pass the program. So you get a certificate and a final payment. Uh, there's also a community bound period at the very beginning where you learn how to get involved in the community because since you're going to have to collaborate with these communities, it's important that you get to know the people, that you chat in a daily basis, that you participate on the community. So there is here uh, a link on my slides for more information about Google Summer of Code if you are interested on, on reading about it. Also feel free to ask uh, all of us uh, you know, members anywhere in, in our channels about the program, we are happy to help. I am now also one of the administrators of GNOME in the Google Summer of Code program, so I usually talk a lot to the interns when they got selected. Uh, I organize uh, their presentations during Guadec, so interns are invited to go to Guadec and to speak about their projects in Guadec. Uh, and uh, let's get to Outreachy. Outreachy, it's uh, a program that was inspired in Google Summer of Code, but it was mostly focused on minorities and groups that are underrepresented in tech. Uh, it's in interesting about the history of outreach that it started in GNOME. Uh, we created in GNOME the GNOME Outreach Program for Women, and we had a, a few interns in the past. And then Outreach got so much interest from the other open source communities that it became its own organization. Uh, nowadays, there are various other organizations working in Outreach. Uh, you should check the outreach.org website for eligibility. What is interesting about Outreach is that you don't necessarily need to be coding. So Outreach accepts uh, testing, docs, design, marketing. There are various projects for various organizations, also coding, of course. So you, and also there are some Outreach chats on Twitter. So you can follow the at Outreach account on Twitter and ask questions over there. That uh, oftentimes there is this chat about answering questions that people might have uh, about uh, the program. Another great thing about outreach is that it happened twice a year. So people from the Global South, they usually don't have vacations during the middle of the year, during June, July, are able to, to work on from December to March. This was very useful. This is very useful for people from Brazil, for instance, because in Brazil, we have uh, summer vacations in, in, in the end of the year, not in the middle of the year when it's the winter. So outreach is much more inclusive on, on this regard. And outreach pays $5,500, which is also a pretty good stipend. Uh, one thing I want to convey about these programs is that the feature you're going to be working on, the contribution you're going to be making, it's very important, of course. But the most important thing to us is onboarding you in the community. This is a way for us to give opportunity for people to get paid, to experiment participating in the, in the community and trying to find professional ways to continue collaborating with us or con continue collaborating in their free time. But it's a way for us to build uh, the next generation of developers in our community. So these programs are very important for us in a community for our internal growth, for us to build the next generation that are going to keep pull, pulling it on forward, right? pushing it on forward. Um, so since I mentioned that both programs require, in GNOME, we, we require that students applying for both programs, they need to have made already a contribution. So you need to have a proven record that you are capable of using basic version control system and processes and all. So you can make already a uh, first contribution to GNOME. You can uh, go to the newcomer's guide. Uh, I'm going to be posting here the link in the chat, but it's wiki.gnome.org slash newcomers. And there we have a step-by-step -step process teaching people how to contribute code to GNOME, how to choose a project you want to contribute, 
how to compile that project because you also want to be running the latest version of that application to be able to contribute to it because uh, when applications are released, they are released on a stable version and then a development process starts and it usually takes six months for an application to be delivered. So oftentimes a bug you see in a stable application has been fixed already on the development model and is going to be ready in the next release. So the Newcomer's Guide teaches you how to choose a project, how to build it, how to solve a test, how to submit. Uh, we oftentimes do Newcomer's Workshop. You can find on YouTube if you search for Gnome uh, Newcomer's Workshop, where me and my colleagues uh, are teaching people how to make a patch contributing to Gnome, how to download the project, how to build everything. It's also important for you to participate on the community from, from a, a cultural point of view, being involved with the folks and understanding how things are made, how things are discussed is very important. So joining the chat with the developers is also very nice and important. And be patient. It takes a long time for, for your contributions to go through, for you to understand how the project works, for you to understand how to, to get around all the complexities of developing an operating system. But as I said, we are developing an operating system. We are developing a whole experience on a desktop. So things are hard. So expect uh, that uh, you're going to be able to contribute in various ways. There are very easy tasks to contribute. There are uh, tasks in GNOME that are marked for newcomers. So if you go to the GNOME GitLab, you're going to find a lot of issues that are like easy and they are left uh, only for new contributors to do it. So the, the experienced developers don't touch those. But yeah, we need to be patient to understand that we are releasing a complex uh, code base and some things take a while to to be accepted, to change. And this is just the, the essence of developing complex systems, right? Uh, what we do systems engineering is this uh, system of uh, this uh, work with complex systems. But I'm pretty sure that uh, everybody can find something that they are passionate about in GNOME. Either you're contributing uh, to documentation, design, marketing, or code. You might have your favorite app, or you might have your own app that you invented, or you might contribute uh, fixing some bugs on GNOME. There are various ways you can contribute and find something that actually motivates you because I think that you are only able to continue engaged in the long term if you are actually passionate about it. So, yes. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention is about the after internship because after you got paid and you work during the internship and you get approved and everybody's happy about it, uh, what do you do about it? Some people can, can afford to contrib continue contributing on their free time while they're continuing with their studies, but a lot of us couldn't. And uh, we have this expression that volunteer time is not fungible, which means that uh, you cannot force volunteers to work on things that they don't want to work or that they're not get paid to work. So uh, what we encourage people is to become a GNOME Foundation member, which is continue contributing to GNOME and use your GNOME portfolio to get uh, positions in, in the job market. There are various companies I mentioned that I work for Red Hat, but there are also contracting companies like Collabora, Igalia. Uh, there are various other companies that do peripheral things to GNOME, so they don't necessarily develop GNOME, but they develop technologies that either started on GNOME or are technologies that are used in GNOME. So there are companies paying for GStreamer work. A lot of uh, the GStreamer is this framework for audio and multimedia manipulation. So there are a lot of companies developing uh, entertainment system for cars and they are hiring GNOME developers because of that, because of their expertise in GStreamer. Uh, so that there is a job market and this relationship you build with your mentor with the broader community is going to definitely help you get better job positions. So after the internship, it's very interesting to find ways for you to fund your, your future in the project because staying in the project brings a lot of positive uh, things in, in your career. I have a career where I work every day, work on GNOME and yeah, it's a blessing. I, I really am happy to, to be able to do this and I cannot imagine myself doing anything else. So that's uh, what I wanted to, to address today, teaching about uh, GSOC and Outreachy. And later on today, I'm gonna be doing some presentation with a bit of live coding about how to develop GTK applications. So you can learn how to create your own applications and how most of the GNOME applications are written. So you get familiar a bit with the code. So if you're writing to code, uh, it might be a good one to, to watch. So I guess now I can be taking some questions. Let me see the etherpad. Uh, there is no new questions there. Anybody has uh, questions in the chat? Thank you.
Yeah, that was very awesome, uh, Felipe. Thank you. Okay, so if anyone has a question, just drop it on the chat or the uh, question part. I'll get it across to him.